So now we can begin cleaning up parts of the cockpit. Now, in some cases, depending on how they do the pour stubs, uh, you may or may not need to do too much. Um, and in most cases, you can probably just get away with just using your X-Acto knife to do the cleaning up and not have to do any sanding. Now, case in point is here on this bottom part. Since this part's going to be glued, we only need to just get it just then cleaned up enough since it's never going to be seen you don't need to worry too much about it just try to make sure that there and another case important here and here and generally you should always check and make sure Hence the instructions and, when possible, dry fitting. But as I said earlier, this kit is interesting in that we're doing the cockpit about midway through instead of first thing. In most cases, you'll do the cockpit first and then sandwich it between the two fuselage halves. And, as I said, in most cases you won't have this part to deal with. Uh, this part I'm, again, just going to do light now since we're going to be gluing it and then just sand it up later. Right. Now, on little parts like this, you do want to be very, very careful when handling them. It's, it's very easy to damage or destroy them. In some cases you may even just want to forego doing any type of cleaning up on them. Alright, so looking good and I'm gonna go paint these and be back with the next part since, oh yeah, since this part has basically two colors that we're going to need. Uh, next part I'll show quick and easy masking. And Oh yes. Actually, one thing I should also show. Great use for sticky tack. Is a, in most cases you can use sticky tack to attach parts to your sprue t trees. Parts especially like this one. And also this one. Since there are areas of the parts that are never going to be seen, you can go ahead and just use the sticky tag as a means to easily connect them. Put it on the back, screw it in, boom. Now I'll also be using sticky tag later on for another aspect of this build and so you're just gonna have to stay tuned until we get to that so I'll be back once I get these um, painted with their first coat of paint alright now I've got the parts that I had previously cut out painted up and now we're going to mask now for most masking I like using the Tamiya brand uh, masking tape as general I find it it the use to work with now one thing to ensure that you don't have any pull up when you remove the mask is to basically run it on your hand, pull it off, it reduces the tackiness and should help prevent any pull up when you go to remove it. Though if you prime correctly and everything you shouldn't have that problem but it same time it's always good just to play it safe so you just want to make sure you you get the it completely down and generally general one nice thing about this tape is you can to some degree tell visually where it's still sticking up 
And yeah, once you get that, you're pretty much good to go. Um, for odd parts like this one, in general, just have to probably do it in a couple steps. Um, right, so let's see. I'm not too much concerned with the side as I am about the inside since the sides are not going to be seen. Now it's better to general over mask and play it safe than to under mask and potentially miss a part and then be in trouble. Okay, okay. I take it care of that one. Now, let's see. Now Parts like this chair are, in general, more difficult. And truthfully, what I should have done was paint the um, base first, and then mask off and paint the seat. But hmm. so, in a case like that, you just unfortunately going to have to get a little creative and. In general, it's a good idea to keep multiple sizes of tape. That way you're never surprised and can adapt. And if you've got a lot of excess like here, just trim it off. A pair of scissors. No real big deal. And I'm, it's like I'm about out of time, so I'm going to stop it here and come back once I get all the masking done.